Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Babel on Talmud. Today we're studying a uh, daf Samich of Mesechta Erevin, daf 60. So today we're going to discuss the status of a ladder. Interesting question conceptually. Is a ladder considered like an entrance way or not? Meaning if you have, let's say, two spaces with a wall in between, but there's a ladder. So, yeah, how do, how do, you, how do you deal with that? Making an Eruv to the east and west of where you are. We'll see what that means exactly. And a city that's within the Tchum, which is an interesting question that's come up. Um, it, you know, if you make an Eruv outside of the city, your Eruv Tchum and outside of the city, does, can you walk anywhere within that city that falls out in the Tchum or maybe only as far as your 2000 Amos will let you go? So that's a question that has come up in the past. And we're going to explore that a little bit more today and tomorrow, which is an interesting question. However, let's begin on Daf Nuntes Amud Beis, around ten lines from the bottom. So, Boy Mine Rav Ami Bar Ada Harpano Mi Raba. So, Rav Ami Bar Ada Harpano asked Akasha of Raba, Sulam Mikan Ufesach Mikan Mau. Okay. So, what if you have a city? And it's a city that is a Rishus Arab, so it's you know, 600,000 people, fine. Now, you, it has an entranceway at one end, and on the other end of the city, there's a ladder. Interesting. So, we said that if you have, right, the top line of the daf says that if you have a Rishus Arab that only has one entrance, so Ma'arvin is Kula, so then you can make an Arab for the entire, for the entire city. Now, Right, so you have a city that is a, a, a an ir shel rabim, and it's got only one entrance, so you can make an error for the entire city because it's not like the encampment in the desert where it was open on both sides. Fine. Now, what's interesting about this case is that on one side there is a an entrance, on the other side there's a ladder. So it's interesting to like conceptually to think, how do you define an entrance? Is an entrance like an opening in a wall? In which case, well, there's no opening in the wall here, or is an entrance just a means to get to the other side? And a ladder will suffice. So therefore, would a ladder be considered an entrance or not? And the nafkamina being, if we consider it to be an entrance, well then, it's got an entrance on both sides, and it, you wouldn't be able to make an Arab. If we treat the ladder just as if it doesn't exist, so it's kilu like a wall, well then, the city only has one entrance, and you would be able to make an Arab. So that's the Gemara's Kasha. Amrle, so Rabbi responds, Hachi Amr Rav Sulam Taras Pesach Alav. So Rabbi responds that according to Rav, a ladder ha- is considered like an opening. And therefore, this city is open on both ends, and you may not make an Arab. I guess maybe you could put a Lechi on both sides, maybe that would help. But, but certainly, sort of by default, you would be unable to make an Arab in this city because it's open on both ends. Amrle of Nachman Lotatsi Sulay. Now, interestingly, Rav Nachman says, "Do not listen to Rabba." Hachiyam Rav Adabar Hava Amarav. The Rav Adabar Hava says the name of Rav, right? Because Rabba was quoting Rav as saying that a ladder is considered like an entrance. Now, Rav Nachman is quoting Rabba Bar in the name of Rav that a sulam toras pesach alav v'soras mechitza alav that in certain cases a ladder is considered like an entrance, and in certain cases it's considered like a wall. Uh, now, interestingly, Rabba was, Rabba was not a, a direct student of Rab. He was a student of uh, Rav Yehuda, of Rav Huna. They were students of Rab, whereas Rav Nachman, as we learned in Masech Shabbos, was directly a student of Rab. So Rav Nachman is kind of defending Rab and saying um, from one of his other teachers, Rav, Rav Rabba Bar Avua, um, that according to Rab, a ladder sometimes is like an entrance and sometimes is like a mechitza. So a ladder has the status of a wall, like we said, meaning in this case, that when you have an ear shell rabim and there's an entrance on one side and a ladder on the other side, we treat the ladder like a wall and we say that you can make an Arab in this city. And when do we say that a ladder is like an entryway, is like a doorway? Besulam shebenchte chatseris, when you have a ladder that is between two chatsers. Ratsu echad ma'ayr, ratsu shnai ma'ayrvin. If they want, so then they could make an Arab together jointly, 
or they can make their own separate Arabs. So meaning, so you have two Chatzars that share a wall. Now, there is no entranceway between them, but there is a ladder. So we say, in that case, we can treat it as though you have two Chatzars with a doorway in between. Because if you have two Chatzars that share a wall, but there is no entranceway at all, so there's no way to get from one to the other, so then they can't join together in an Arab. However, if there is an entranceway there, then they can join together in an Arab. So you have Chatzar A makes an Arab, Chatzar B makes an Arab, and then they join together, and now you can carry in the whole thing. So, um, or maybe they only have to make one Arab for both of them. Uh, I'm not actually sure, but they can, um, yeah, hopefully we'll get to that soon enough. Anyways, um, but, where were we again? So, what we're saying here is that if there is a wall, with no entrance but a ladder. So in that case, we could treat the ladder as a Pesach. And it's as though there's an entrance between them. And if they want, they can make an Erev together and be able to carry from one to the other. Or if they want, they could treat it separately as um, two separate Chatzars. And each one would make their own separate Erev and carry in their own Chatzars, but not between them. So according to Rav Nachman, who says the name of Rav Barbu, says the name of Rav, that a ladder can sometimes be considered like a um, Pesach, such as when it's between two Chatzars, and it can be sometimes considered like a a um, a um, Mechitza, like a wall, which is when you have a city and you have an entrance at one end and a ladder at the other. It's considered like a wall, and therefore it's only got one entrance, and you can make an Erev in the entire thing. Whereas Raba said that Rav always says that a ladder is like a Pesach, and therefore he would say that in this city that has one entrance and one ladder, um, you would be unable to make an Arab because you have a ladder, you have a, 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 an entrance at both ends. Okay. Now, the Gemara asks, of Nachman Hachi, did Rav Nachman really say this? Did Rav Nachman really say Likula to be lenient to say that when you have this ladder, and you have a city, right? You're Shalrabim. You have an entrance at one end. You have a ladder on the other end. Rav Nachman says we could treat the ladder as a mechitza. And therefore, he's being mekel. He's saying that since the ladder is a wall. And um, so then, effectively, this city has one entrance. And you can make an Arab. So because Rav Nachman is treating this ladder as a wall, he can be lenient to say that this city can make an Arab. But Ve'amr of Nachman of Shmuel, but of Nachman said the name of Shmuel. An shechatzer v'an shemir peses, shechachu v'lo ervu. So if you have people of a courtyard and people of a mir peset, like a, a, a balcony, that forgot and did not make an eruv together. So what's this talking about? So he's talking about a. Um, okay, so imagine you have a chatzer, a courtyard, and we got north, south, east, and west. You enter into the courtyard from the south. Okay, now when you enter in from the south. You're looking right at a building. This building has two floors. On the first floor is two apartment units. On the second floor are two apartment units. Now, you walk, you enter into the Chatzar from the south, and right ahead of you is this building. And also you see two doors, and those doors, you know, go into two respective apartment units. So you walk into the Chatzar from the south, there are two doors over there to two apartments, and those two apartments share the chatzer, share this chatzer area, and of course they're going to have to make an Arab if they want to carry in the chatzer on Shabbos. Now, you turn right, and then you make a left, and now you're on the east side of this building, and there's a ladder. You climb the ladder, you get to a second level, and there's another chatzer now on like a shared space when you get up to the second level, and another two doors, and those two doors go into two other apartment units respectively. So now essentially what you have is, you have kind of two chatzers, right? You have the ground level chatzer, which is used by the bottom two um, units. Now you climb the ladder to get to the second level and there's like another shared space, which is shared by the second two units and that's like their own chatzer. Now what's interesting is that in order for the people from the second level to go anywhere, to like get groceries or something, they have to climb down the ladder into the ground level chatzer and then leave the chatzer. So the we basically have two chatzers over here, the ground level chatzer and the second floor chatzer. The second floor chatzer is really just for the two units on the second floor. However, the ground level chatzer is for the two 
units on the ground level, but the people on the second floor also need to use that chatzar in order to get out and like, buy groceries and stuff. Like if they ever they need to leave the chatzar, they're gonna have to go onto the first floor chatzar. So basically, that ground level chatzar is shared by all four units, and therefore, it wouldn't be enough for the ground level to make a uh, eruv by themselves, the two units on the bottom to make an eruv, and the two units on the second floor to make their own eruv for their shared space, because the ground level is really shared by all four units, and therefore they would have to all make an eruv together, all four units would have to make an eruv together in order to be able to carry on the ground level. So that's what we're talking about. But what's interesting here is that what's connecting them, what's essentially our doorway between them, is this ladder, right? Meaning, as we said a few minutes ago, if you have two chatzers, and there is no doorway between them. So then, um, you know, you don't make it, there's no way to make an air between them and each one can carry in its own, in their own chatzer. Now, so over here, we have the ground level chatzer and we have the second floor chatzer. Where's the, where's the Pesach? Where's the entrance? Where, where's the doorway? So the doorway is the ladder. So, and over here, what, so what are we saying? So the top line of Daf Samech, Im yesh daka arba, so if at the beginning of the ladder, there is like some kind of entrance way that is for Tfachim, that is, is signifying that the second level Chatzar, uh, is making themselves distinct and separating themselves from the, right, the second floor Chatzar, separating themselves from the ground level Chatzar, well then, then, then they don't need to make an Eruv together. Right, the second level chutz are saying, "Look, we're separate. Don't mind us. You guys do your own thing. We're doing our own thing, and they don't make an eruv together." So im yesh lefanei adaka arba ena oseris. So then the second level chutz won't um, create an issue for the bottom level chutz, and they can each make their own eruvs and carry in their own chutz. The imla, but there, if there is no daka, if there isn't this four tefach doorway at the beginning of the ladder. Well then, it's all considered, right, then Vimlav Oseris. Well then, basically this ladder is going to serve as a doorway. And, um, because, and then you have two chatzers, the ground level chatzer and the second floor chatzer, and there's a doorway, which in this case is the ladder between them. And, um, the, since the second level uses the bottom level, uses the ground level chatzer, well then, um, you're not going to be able to carry, nobody's going to be able to carry in the ground level chatzar unless they make an Erev together. So what do we see from here? We see that this ladder is serving as a Pesach. And this is Rav Nachman in the name of Shmuel. That this ladder is serving as a Pesach. And over here it is Lechumra. So the question is, just like over here we say that this ladder is considered like a Pesach and therefore we're going to go Lechumra to say that um, in order to carry in the ground level chatzar they would all have to make an Erev together, and if they don't, you can't carry in the ground level Chatzar. Well then, we should say the same thing when you have an Ir Shal Rabim, and there's a Pesach at one end, and there's a ladder on the other, so Rav Nachman should be Machmir there as well, and say that it's like a Pesach, and you can't just make a regular Erev. That's the Gemara's Kasha. So, the Gemara answers, Hacha b'may here, what are we talking about? B'delo gavo amir Pesach asar. Okay, so here it's talking about where that second level is actually less than 10 Tfachim above the ground. And because the uh, second level is less than 10 Tfachim from the ground, well then, it's really all just one Chatzar. It's just one, right? It's not a separate Chatzar. And since it's not a separate Chatzar, they all have to make an Erev together. And if they don't, well then you can't carry in, you know, in the ground level Chatzar. So vi lo gavo asara ki daka mayave. But if the second level didn't make in, uh, is, is, I'm sorry, if the second level is not 10 tefachim tall, well then who cares that you make this daka? Who cares that you make this entranceway four, that's four tefachim tall by, at the beginning of this ladder that goes up to the second level? Why should that make any difference? It's just one chatzer. So just cause you have that Daka doesn't mean now that those two units don't have to make join in the chat, in, in the Arab. Of course they do. It's just one chatzer. So mugufefes ad eser amis. So no, here it's talking about where there's a wall around this second level, and there's an entrance way in the wall in order to get in and out of it. Um, and it's ten amis or less. I.e., it's just a regular pesach. So then it's essentially like you have two chatzers with a pesach in between them. And 
since the middle, since the inner chatzer, i.e. the second floor, uses the main, the right, the ground level chatzer, um, so they would all have to make an Erev together. And the cave and the Ovid Daka, but once they make this Daka, this fourth Fachim entranceway thing at the op- at the bottom of the ladder, well then, Istaluke Istaluk Le Mehacha, they're showing that even though, yes, we're two distinct Chatzers and there's an entranceway in between us, and since we go out by, since we all share the, the ground level part of the Chatzer, we should have to make an error. But we are removing ourselves by, we are indicating that we're removing ourselves by building this, um, Daka to show that we're separate. Don't worry about us. You guys can make your own Chatzer, uh, your own Erev. We're going to make our own Erev. And that would work. I'm a Vira Mashmo. It says a Vira in the name of Shmo. Kosal Sharat Safa Bisulamus. Okay. If you have a wall that you, um, put ladders all over it, I feel be Eser me Eser, even if it's more than 10 Amis wide, Torah's Mechitz Olive, it's still considered a wall. Meaning, so imagine you have, um, two Chatzers right next to each other. Okay. And, or, or let's say even you have like one chutzer, okay? And let's just say it's completely enclosed, okay? And outside of it is Rosh Hashanah. But you have, uh, like a whole bunch of ladders lined up right next to each other uh, uh, against the wall. And, uh, those ladders from the first one to the end one to the last one is more than 10 amis wide. So if we would consider these ladders to be a Pesach, an opening, well, if it's more than 10 Amis wide, you basically have an opening in the wall that's more than 10 Amis, and we know that that's going to be considered a Pirza. Um, we haven't really gotten into Pesach and Pirza in a while, but I'm sure we still remember it'll be a Pirza, and that's a problem. You have this area that's breached into Rosh Hashanah, Rabim. You won't be able to carry in this enclosed area anymore. Um, however, that's not what we're saying. We're saying that it's completely fine. We don't consider it a Pirza. Right? Again, I'm reviewed on Mishmuel. Kosal Shir Tzafu B'Sulamus, if you have this wall that you lined with ladders, I feel be yeser me yeser. Even if these ladders, um, are wider than 10 Amis, Taras Mechitza Halav, we still treat this, uh, wall as a wall. We don't treat it as if there is a big opening in it. Rami Le Rav Brona, the Rav Yehuda, so Rav Brona asks Akash on Rav Yehuda, the Maitzar to the Rav Chanina, in the olive press of uh, by Rav Chanina, Miyam Shmuel Torah's Mechitza Olav. Would Shmuel really say that um, a ladder is treated like a wall and not like an opening? The Amr of Nachman Amr Shmuel, but Rav Nachman said in the name of Shmuel, and we're going to repeat the case that we just had. Hanshimir Peses Vanshi Chotzer. If you have the people on the second floor and the people on the bottom floor and they all share that chotzer, ervu, and they didn't, both floors didn't make an eruv together. If by the ladder that goes up to the second floor, there is like this entrance that's four tvachim tall. So ena oseres, well then it'll be fine, meaning they each made their own individual eruvs, but they didn't make an eruv together. So, um, the people on the ground floor can nonetheless carry in the larger bottom floor, uh, ground level chutzer because the second floor made a daka to indicate that they are not participating in the, that they're sort of pulling themselves away, removing themselves from the bottom floor. Um, if they didn't make this daka Osiris, well, then, then the, um, second floor, since they use the main ground floor chatzar, they would cause cause problems for the bottom floor and the bottom floor would not be able to carry in the chatzar because they didn't all four units make a, an Erev together. So we see that a ladder is considered a Pesach, not a um, chot, not a Mechitza. Hachab Ma'eskina, we say, no, what are we talking about on these two levels? Asar, where the second floor is less than 10 Tvachim, so it's all just one chatzar and that's why they have to Make an air together. But if it, if the second level is less than ten tefachim tall, so who cares if they make a, ta, a, a daka? They're all going to be nonetheless the same chotzer. So ha, so uh, so be megufefes ad eser amis. So it's talking about where that second level has a wall around it, and and there is an entrance in the an opening in the wall that is ten amis or less. So um, it's basically a chotzer within a chotzer. 
and there's a Pesach in between. And since the middle, the, the inner Chatzar, right, the second level, needs to use the other level. So therefore, they would all have to, it's a share, that makes the ground level Chatzar a shared space, and they would have to all make a uh, Erev together. But the Chavim Do'av Daka is the Luke Stalik Me'ocha. Once they make a uh, Daka by the ladder, they're showing that they are separating themselves from the Chatzar and from the ground level chutzpah and they don't all have to make an air together and that's why it would be okay but don't learn from there that a um a ladder is a pesach no that, that that is not why um they would need to make an air together it's not because it's a pesach it's because it's less than um 10 tfachim and there's like an uh, entrance way and therefore they have to make an air together hanubne kakunae there were these fellows from a place called Kakunai, the also the Kamid of Yosef, that they came before Rav Yosef. Okay. Amru lay, and they said to Rav Yosef, Havlon Gavad the Arivlon Masin. So okay, so so Rose Rav Yosef of course was the Rosh Hashiva at Pumpedisa. And um so I don't know if he's necessarily Rosh Hashiva at the time, but uh, let's say he was, why not? So so these people from Kakunai, they said, look. We need an Arab. So they came to the yeshiva in Pumpadisa. They said to Rav Yosef, they said, Hey, can you send us somebody to make us an Arab? Okay, fine. Omar lehu, Omar le Labai. So Rav Yosef said to Bai, Zil Arab lu. So Rav Yosef says to Bai, Abai, look, they're looking for somebody to make an Arab. Can you go make them an Arab? So Vichazi, the lo mats, Vichazi, the lo matsavcha, Allah, Bve Midrasha. And Rav Yosef gave Abai one directive. And that was, whatever you do, don't cause a scandal. Don't create a situation where they're going to make a whole scandal in, in the Beis HaMedrash that you uh, messed up or you made some kind of wrong decision. Just do a good job, come back here, and that's that. Okay, so Abai says, all right, sure, no problem. I'll go make them an Arab and I, I won't mess up, all right. But of course then, when he got there, as we all know from Masech to Erevin, it can drive you insane. The next thing Abaye knows, he's, 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 he's got all sorts of questions. He said, do this, that, and it's a whole mess. And he realizes why Rav Yosef was instructing him, you know, don't, don't make any mistakes. Abaye saw that making an Arab is not so posh it. So, Azal, Abaye went to Kakunae. So, Chazal Hanubate, and he saw that there were certain houses, the Psikhil and Naira, that they were open to a river. Now, Kakunae was a city, it was an Ir Shorabim Ben Isis Shalyachid. It was a city that was a, um, had 600,000 inhabitants and it, the, uh, population went down. So we said in the Mishnah that in that case, what you do is you make an Eruv for the city, but you have to leave over a section and that section will make their own private Eruv. So when Abai got to Kakunae, he saw that there was the entire city. But there were a few houses at the end that were facing the river and their doors were facing the river and they weren't facing the rest of the city at all. So you had all the entire city that was kind of like facing each other. They're all just like being like city houses. But then there were these few exceptions to the rules. There were these houses at the edge kind of close to the river and their backs faced the, faced the city and the front of the houses were, 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 were facing the river. So Omar, so Bai said, okay, perfect. Hani, lavishir lamato. So in designing the city Erev, I will leave these houses as the Shi'ur, as the section that I'm going to leave out of the main Erev, and they'll make their own Erev, and then the rest of the city will be, will have their Erev. And that's how I'm going to design the city, the Erev for the city of Kakonai. But Hadar Amar, but then Abai said, wait a second, but, but technically the Mishnah says that you don't make an Erev in all of the city, Michlal, which you can argue implies to Ibaile Eruve Matsi Ma'arve, that meaning if you wanted to, you should be able to make an Eruv in the entire city, except that because it was an Ir Shalab and Benaisa Shoyachid, we leave a section away out of the Eruv and they make their own Eruv. But not because they're unable to make an Eruv with the rest of the city, we just 
we, 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 we just refrain from including part of the city in the Arab. But the thing is, since these houses, their backs face the rest of the city, so they're actually separate from the rest of the city, and you wouldn't actually be able to include them with the rest of the city in an Arab. So, you know, um, Abai was saying to himself, he was thinking that maybe since these houses wouldn't actually be able to be included in in, in Erev anyways, maybe they wouldn't count as the part that I'm leaving out of the Erev. So Eli Avid Lehu Kaveh, so Abai said, okay, so maybe what I'll do is I'll put windows into these houses at the end by the river, the Bowl Eruve Der Chalonos Matsu Me'ave. That this way, since there are windows in the back of the houses where it faces the rest of the city, so then if they want to, they can be included in this in the Erev with the rest of the city. Um, and then I'll leave them out of the Erev and they will be the Shear and they can make their own Erev. But Hadar Amar, but then Abai said, wait, low Abai, wait, may, maybe you don't need to actually put in these windows and maybe we can just keep the houses the way they are. And even though, yes, they wouldn't be able to be included in a general Erev, uh, I can nonetheless have them be the Shear and leave them out of the Erev. Or, you know, leave them out of the Erev because they wouldn't be able to be part of the Erev anyways, but they could still serve as the remaining, the, the leftover part. Let's read that again. So now Mechoza was a city just like Kakunae. It was a um ear shall rabin venais shall yachid. And therefore, if you want to make an Arab, you have to leave a shear. Over there, you have to leave over a section. Now, the Rabbi Baravua, Ma'ayavla Lechula Machoza, that Rabbi Baravua made an Erev, made an Erev in all of Machoza, and how did he design the Machoza Erev? Arsiasa, Arsiasa, neighborhood by neighborhood. So let's imagine that Machoza had, uh, like three strips, okay, and so each one was a neighborhood. Now, Mishumpeira de Vetore, because of these, like, feeding areas of the animals. So basically, the way that the city of Mechoza was designed was that there was one strip, which was just like one neighborhood. And then there was this area where the uh, animals would eat. And it was just filled with like date pits and stuff that the animals would eat. Then there was another strip, which was neighborhood number two. And then another place for the animals to eat. And then another strip, which was area number th- neighborhood number three. So the way that Rabbi Baravua designed the Mechoza Eruv was that he made... Um, different, a separate era for each neighborhood. Um, now, since it was a city that was Yer Shal Rabin Venaisa Shal Yachid, there had to be a leftover area. And the way it worked out was, so you'd have neighborhood number one, they would make their own Erev, and then the rest of Mechoza was considered the Shear, was considered what was left out of their Erev. And then neighborhood number two would make their own Erev, and the rest of Mechoza was considered what's left out of their Erev. So each neighborhood had their Erev, they also had the leftovers, now, what's interesting about that is the chokhad v'chad avishir l'chavri. So each one was this leftover for the other ones. V'afogad the ibo the aruve ba de adadi lo matzum arve. And even though if they wanted to make one big erev theoretically for the entire mechosa, they nonetheless wouldn't be allowed to because of these uh, separations in between the neighborhoods of these feeding areas. So here we have a city that you would be unable to make one big erev, and yet um, we say that. They would make individual Arabs for each neighborhood and the rest of Mechoza would be considered the Shear, even though you wouldn't be able to make one Arab for everybody anyways. So therefore, applying that logic to Kokana'e, Kakona'e, so applying that logic to Kakona'e, we should say that even though you would not be able to make one big Arab to include the city and the, and the homes on the river, nonetheless, um, the homes on the river can be the shiur, uh, can be the remainder, the remaining area for the main erev. So Hadar Amar, but then Abai said, Lo dami, wait, maybe you cannot uh, compare Kakona'e to Mechoza, because Hasmi bai la aruve der gagos, because over there in Mechoza, apparently the roofs were somehow connected to each other between the different neighborhoods with, um, I don't know, passageways of sorts. And therefore, you would be able to include them in one big Erev. Whereas, Vahane lo ma'arve. Whereas, in Kakunoe, you wouldn't be able to make an Erev with everybody because 
there's no connection between the houses on the river and the rest of the city. Hilkach Naibzon Kave, therefore, we should put in windows. Okay, fine. Hader Amar. Abai then said, wait, no. Kave Nami Lobai. Wait, maybe you don't actually need to put in windows. Dahu. So there was this granary, um, this grain storage house of Mar Bar Popidasa who lived in Pumpidisa. Okay, fine. Popidasa mi Pumpidisa. Sounds nice. Now, Vishavi Shir the Pumpidisa, and that was the remaining area for Pumpidisa, for the Pumpidisa Erev. And even though it wouldn't be able to be included in the main Erev because it's not for living. So Amr. Abai said, Abai says, okay, now I understand what Rav Yosef meant when he said, make sure you don't make a whole mess with this Erev. He said, making an Erev is not simple. So the Mishnah said, So the Mishnah said, that, what the Mishnah said, that if you have a, uh, an Ir Shorab, so then you have to leave, as we were just talking about, a part of the city outside of the Erev and that part of the city has to be the size of Ir Chadasha. Tani, we learn in Abraisa, Amr of Yehuda, says of Yehuda, Ir Achas Ha'is of Yehuda, there was one city in Judah, Bachadasha Shema, and it was called Chadasha. Vayuba Gim Nun Diurim, and there were 50 fellows who lived in this place called Chadasha, Anashim Venashim Vitaf, men, women, and children. And that was the example city that the Chacham would use as um, the size of a shiur. And it itself was actually a shiur, that there was a larger city next to Chadasha, and Chadasha served as the remainder area for the larger city that was next to it. What about Chadasha? In Chadasha itself, did you have to leave a section in their Erev left out. Chadasha, what do you mean? Did you have to leave an area in their Erev left out? Well, just like Chadasha was the remainder section for the larger city, well, then the larger city can also serve as the remainder area for Chadasha. Why should you have to leave out part of Chadasha? No, what we want to know is a city that's like Chadasha, what's Salacha? Meaning, if you have a city in the middle of nowhere and there's 50 diurin, do you need to have a um, area left over? And I guess it's probably talking about maybe it was once upon a time there was a lot more than 50 people. Maybe it was in Irshel, Rabban Van Isis, Shoyach, and now there's only 50 people living there. So they want to make an area, but we said that you have to leave out part of it. So do you have to leave out part of it? So if Huna, Virav Yehuda, Chad Amr, Ba'ya Shir, Vachad Amr, Lo Ba'ya Shir. One of them says that you need to have a leftover area. One, one of them says you don't. Alright, sounds like a nice clean machlokas. Though we don't really explain what the logic is. Rib Shimon Omer, says the Holy Rib Shimon, Gimel Chatseris Vichule. So, um, Rib Shimon argues on Rebut and says that this Shiur needs to be three, uh, Chatseris that each have two houses in them. Amr of Chaman Barguria, Amr Rab, as we learned, uh, the other week when we were talking about the exceptions to the rules of Psak, right? We said that whenever you have Machlokas, so Rabbi Yehuda and Rib Shimon, we always pass in like Rabbi Yehuda. And then Rav Chaman Barguria said in the name of Rab that in this case we pass in like Rib Shimon. So, Amr of Chaim Barguri, Amr Rab, Alacha Kriyab Shem, and Rabbi Yitzchak, Amr said, Rabbi Yitzchak, Afidu Ba'is Echad V'chatzer Achas. Even, so, Rabbi Yitzchak says, you don't need, um, three chatzers that each have two houses, even one chatzer with no houses, and one house without a chatzer. Chatzer, Achas, Sakadatech, wait, you really think that it means a chatzer that doesn't have any houses in it? Ela Ema, Ba'is Echad, Bi Chatzer Achas. No. That Rabbi Yitzchak says that all you actually need is one chatzer that has one house in it. Interesting. Amalei Abaye says Abaye the Rav Yosef. How do Rabbi Yitzchak Gemara Osvar? So Abaye says to Rav Yosef, he says this statement of Rabbi Yitzchak that um, all you need is one chutzur with one house in it. Is it like halacha or is it just like an idea, a thought? So Amalei, my nafkalan lan mina mina. So Rav Yosef says, who cares? Why are you asking? What's the nafkamina? Amalei Gemara Gemara is Marta Teyes. We've seen Abaye say in the past the nafkamina is. Right? Gemara Gemara is more today. Um, is, you know, are we learning just for fun? Like as if we're singing a song that it doesn't really need to matter or not? No, this is Allah, this is Tachlis, this, this stuff needs to matter. And therefore, is Rabbi Yitzchak just wasting our time? 
or is he teaching us Allah that mamish we need uh, a chatzar with a just one chatzar with one house? Zo, uh, I mean, I guess we don't get more information than that. New Mishnah. So we're going to have to understand exactly what this means. But you have a fellow, let's call him Reuven, and he was in the east, okay? And he said to his son, make me an Erev in the west, all right? If he's in the west, and he says to his son, make me an Erev in the east. So if between where this fellow is right now, and um, his house, there is 2,000 Amis. But between where he is right now and where his son put the Erev, there is more than 2,000 Amis. Well then, Mutter Leveso, we assume, we consider it as if he's spending Shabbos in his house. Vaso Le Eruvo, and we do not consider it as though he's spending Shabbos by his Erev because he's too far away from his Erev. He wouldn't be able to get to where his Erev is because it's more than 2,000 Amis away. And part of the requirements for an Erev is that in, you have to be able to go there and eat the food. So, so therefore, the Erev is irrelevant and we consider it as though he's spending Shabbos at his home. Le Eruv Ama, if between him and his Erev is 2,000 Amis, Uleveso Yasser Mikan, and from his house is more than 2,000 Amis, so he's going to be unable to walk to his house, so also the Veso, Umutu Le Eruvo, well then, um, he can't be Konish Visa by his house because it's too far away, but by his Erev is where he would be Kone Shvisa. Fine. Hanose, because it's within 2,000 Amas. Hanose ne Seruvu be Ibura Shalir. Somebody who puts his Erev in the expanded sections of the city that we talked about, that there are ways of expanding a city. So if you put your um, Erev in the expanded section of the city, well, Loas of Loklum, it makes no difference. Meaning, you basically just put your Erev somewhere in the city, but your whole city is like Dalat Amas for you anyway. So you just, you know, it makes no difference uh, putting an Erev in basically any part of the city, whether it's the city proper, whether it's your house, whether it's uh, the extension of the city. It's all just considered part of the city and it makes no difference. It's all like Dalar Amas anyways. Nisan uchutz letchum, if he puts it outside of the tchum, and what the Gemara is going to explain is that it doesn't mean outside of the tchum. How could you put an Arab outside of the tchum? It means you put it outside the Ibur Shalir. Right? You put it outside of your city. So afilo ama achas, even if you put it just one ama outside, mashaniskar umafsin, that which he gains in one direction. So let's say he put the Arab one ama to the west of the city. So then, so he gains one Amma to the west. He can now uh, walk 2,001 Amas to the west of the city. But he loses that to the right, to the east. So to the east, he can only walk 1,999 Amas. Okay, fine. Okay, so Gemara says, so remember, what was the first thing that the Mishnah said? The Mishnah says that we have a fellow. And this fellow is in the east. And he says... Uh, to his son, make me an Erev in the West. So what we're assuming, what that means right now, is that you have this fellow, and he, he's got a house, Baruch Hashem. Now, this fellow is standing to the east of his house, and he instructs his son, can you make me an Erev to the West of my house? Okay. So now, Bishlama Emenu Uleveso Apayim Amo V'leruvu Yasu Mikan. So I understand then, if that's the case, what the Mishnah says is that, well, so we see. If between him and his house is 2,000 Amas, but between him and his Erev is more than 2,000 Amas, so okay, so let's say you have his house, and this fellow is standing 2,000 Amas to the east of his house, and he says, hey, kid, can you make me an Erev to the west of our house? Well, the thing is, so the house is going to be 2,000 Amas away, but the Erev is going to be more than 2,000 Amas away. So what do we say? So we say that... It's considered that he's spending Shabbos in his house and not with his Erev because his Erev is too far away. Fine. So again, let's start from the beginning. So, so it's entering our mind to say that Lemizrach is Lemizrach Beso, that to the east is to the east of his house, Lemayr of Lemayr of Beso, and to the west is to the west of his house. So I understand what the Mishnah says that between him and his house is 2,000 Amas, and, but it's too far to get to his Erev. It's more than 2,000 Amas away. I get it. That he's able to arrive at his house, which is 2,000 Amas away, but he can't get to his Erev because it's more than 2,000 Amas away. However, but I, what I don't understand is what is the continuation of the Mishnah. That the Mishnah says that if it's 2,000 Amas to get to his Erev, but more than 2,000 Amas to get to his house, so then we say that he's going to be spending Shabbos where his Erev is. But how is that possible? If 
his if he has his house, he's standing to the east of his house, and he's saying to his son, make an Eruv to the west of the house, how could it possibly be that the Eruv, which is further away from him than his house is, how could it be that the Eruv will be 2,000 Amas away, but the house will be more than 2,000 Amas away? He's going to have to first get to his house before he gets to the Eruv. It's going to have to be closer than the Eruv. So again, Elohim, but to say that from where this fellow is in the east, to get to his house is 2,000 Amas no, to get to his Erev is 2,000 Amas, but his house is even further than that. How could you possibly find that? He's going to get to his house before he gets to his Erev. So Yitzchak says, one second. The way that we're understanding it is incorrect. To say that we're talking about to east and west of his house is, 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 is incorrect. What it means is to the east and west of his son. Basically, he's got his son there. And he's standing to the east of his son. And he says to his son, make me an Erev, go west a bit and make the Erev. So then it depends how far west he goes. If he goes so far west that he goes past his house, and now his house is 2,000 amas away from him, and his Erev is even further than that, so then he's going to be spending Shabbos where his house is. However, if the son makes the Erev to the west of where he, the son, is standing right now, but not quite as far as to get to the house, well then... The air could be 2,000 amas away and the house even further than that. Rabba bar Rav Shila Amar Afilu Tema Lemizrach Lemizrach Beso Lemar of Lemar of Beso So Rabba bar Rav Shila gives an interesting answer and he says, you can actually argue that we are talking about to the east and west of his house. And he's saying to his son, make an air to the west of the house. Okay, well then how are you going to find a situation where the air is closer than the house is? So Kigon de Kari Beisi Ba Lachsona is talking about a triangle. Right? Imagine a triangle. And the base of the triangle is where he is. One point, the point to the right is where he is. And the point at the left of the base is where the sun makes the Erev to the west. Now, the point of the air of the triangle is going to be uh, where his house is. And therefore, you can have a situation where his house, so the middle point of the triangle is smack in the middle. Now, the, the base of the triangle is this fellow off to the east. He instructs his son to make a... Um, Erev to the west of his house, okay, so it's further to the west of his house, now you could still have a situation where the Erev, right, if it's a thin triangle, so the base of the of, of this triangle, i.e. between the distance between this fellow and his Erev is less than 2,000 Amis, yet the distance between him and his house, which is the point of the Erev, is going to be more than 2,000 Amis. So, um, that is how you can have it. So, so basically what we're saying is if he's in the east and is, and he instructs his son to make, um, the Erev to the west of his house. So we say, well, if the house, if the point of the triangle is within 2000 Amis, but the Erev is further than 2000 Amis, then he's going to be where his house, he's going to be spending Shabbos in his house. But if b- between him and where his Erev is, is less than 2000 Amis, but his house, i.e. the point of the triangle is more than 2000 Amis away, well, then he's going to be where his Erev is. Very beautiful. The Gemara says, Hanosein Eruvo Besoch Ibura Vechule. So somebody who puts his city, uh, his Eruv within the Ibura shell ear. We said somebody puts his um, um, Eruv Chutz Letchum, says the Gemara. So when the, when the Mishnah says that if he puts his Eruv outside of the Tchum, what do you mean outside of the Tchum? How could you possibly put an Eruv outside of the Tchum Shabbos? So, Ela Ema Chutz Ibura. No, what it means is outside of the Ibura shell ear. Okay. You know, so if you have a city in an extended area of the city, so he would put his Erev outside of the extended part of the city. Okay, fine. Says the Gemara, quoting the Mishnah, That which he gains in one direction, he loses in the other direction. Now this is very interesting, right? So if he puts his Erev one Amma to the west of the city, so now he could walk to the west 2,001 Amas, but to the east of the city can only now walk 1,999 Amas. Now, what's interesting to this about this is that you're not taking the distance of the city into account whatsoever. Meaning, we're not saying that he put his, um, or let's say instead of the negative, let's say in the positive. We can argue that if he puts his air of one ama to the west of the city, so I could say, okay, so he's Konish Visa, where his air of is, and he could walk 2,000 amas in any direction of where the air of is, and therefore, from the air of, he could walk east 2,000 amas, but the city is going to count. It's part of his 2,000 Amis. And therefore, if the city is 500 Amis wide, let's say, so then um, he'll be able to walk from his Erev, one Amma to the east, and then another 500 Amis 
throughout the city. Now, once he gets to the end of the city, he's already walked 501 Amis, and he can walk another 1,499 Amis. So it's not, I can make the argument that, that, right, that, um, meaning if he would be spending Shabbos in the city, so then the whole city is like Dalit Amis, and then he can walk 2,000 Amis in either direction. The Mishnah is arguing that if he makes his Eruv one Amma to the west of the city, so then he can walk uh, 2,001 Amis to the west of the city and only 1,199 no, 1,999 Amis to the east of the city. The Gemara says, or what we're going to ask right now is, I can make the argument that he should only be able to walk 1,499 Amis to the east of the city because the city itself takes up space. If he sleeps in the city, if he's, if he's Konashvisa in the city, then it's Dalad Amis. But if he's not Konashvisa in the city, if he puts his Erev outside of the city, well, then he's not Konashvisa in the city, and therefore the city is just going to count as part of his Trum. So that's what the Gemara wants to figure out. Mashkeniskar visulo. So when we say that if he puts his air of one ama to the east to the west of the city, so then what he gains in one direction, i.e. the one ama, he loses in the other direction, i.e. he only loses out the opportunity to walk one ama to the east. Because we don't take into account the 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 the, the distance of the city. Visulo, but one second, he doesn't lose out any more than that? Maybe we can make the argument, like I just explained, that if the city itself is 500 Amis, we should have to take that into account as well. And you should only be able to walk 1,499 Amis to the east, not 1,999 Amis to the east. Okay, but we learn in a verse, Okay, somebody who puts his Erev in the extension of the city, so he didn't make any difference because he just put his um, uh, Erev in the same city where it would be Konish Visa anyways. If he puts the Erev outside of the um, extension of the city, i.e. outside of the city, even if he only puts it one Amma outside of the city, let's say to the west of the city, so so he loses, so, so he gains that Amma to the west, so now he can walk 2,001 Amas to the west of the city. However, by doing that, he loses out the entire city, whereas if he would have stayed in the city itself, the entire city would just be Dalad Amas. But by putting the air of one Amma outside of the city, now he loses the entire city, because the, the, the size of the city is going to now be part of his 2000 Amis. And he's going to, you know, if the city is 500 Amis, he's going to have to count it as 500 Amis. And he's only going to be able to walk 1,499 Amis to the east of the city now. So my answer is low kasha. And this is a very interesting answer. It depends. If the entire city can fit into the Trum, such as in my example, where the city is 500 Amis wide and he could walk um, 2,000 Amis to the east of his Erev. So the um, city is entirely within the range of his 2,000 Amis Trum. Well, then we treat the city only as Dalad Amis. However, if the city was, let's say, 4,000 Amis wide, which means that he'd run, you know, the, his trum would run out essentially pretty much halfway through the city, well, at that point, he'd only be able to now walk um, until his trum ends, and the city is going, is going to be part of, count as his trum quota, right? So once he runs out of his 2,000 Amis, he's done. So when our Mishnah says that when he puts his air of one Amma, outside of the city. So let's say one Amma to the west of the city. So he gains one Amma to the west, but loses one Amma to the east, and the city isn't taken into account. Well, that is when the entire city fits within the range of his Trum. So it only counts as Dalar Amas. But if the city would be larger than 2,000 Amas, well then it, it would we'd have to count the entire city. And he'd basically run out of Trum halfway through the city. So Uhud Rabbi Idi and like Rabbi Idi, the Amr Bi Idi, Amr Bi Shua bin Levi, Hayamodid Uva, if you have a fellow who is measuring how far his trum takes him, the Khalsamidasu Bhatsiya ear, and the trum runs out halfway through the city, Ainlo Ella Khatsiya ear, well he can only walk halfway through the city, he cannot continue to walk. Khalsamidasu Bisofa ear, if the measurement ran out at the end of the city, i.e., the entire city fall lies within his trum. Well then, well, then the entire city magically now becomes only four Amis and he can continue walking 
uh, past the city for however much is left in his tchum. Very, very interesting. So, that was Daf Samech, Daf 60 of Masechta Eruvin. Uh, let us review what we learned together. We talked about the status of a ladder. Interesting question. Is a ladder considered like a Pesach or is a ladder considered like just the wall? It makes no difference. So Rabba said, uh, quoting Rav, that it's considered like a Pesach. And Rav Nachman uh, said in the name of Rav, uh, Rav Barhav in the name of Rav that it, sometimes it could be considered as an entrance. Sometimes it could be considered as a wall. Uh, and, and I mean, in the case, in the examples that he gave, it was basically the Kula. In general, by Erevin, we go the Kula. So uh, sometimes it could be an entrance. Sometimes it could be a wall. Fine. So in the case of an Ir Shal Rabim, an Isis Shal Yachid, or an Ir Shal Rabim, so it has an entrance on one end and a ladder on the other end, we can consider it like a wall so that you can make a um, Erev in there. Making an Erev east and west of like your house or that was really the question. Rabbi Yitzhak says it's not talking about east and west of your house, it's talking about to the east and west of your son, right? So therefore you can have a situation where the Eruv is actually closer than your house is. Whereas Rabbi Bar uh, Breda Rabbi Shila, he said that it's talking about a triangle. Um, and therefore the base of the triangle is where he is and where his son is or is where his Eruv is. And his house is sort of the point of that triangle. That is how you can have a situation where the Eruv is closer than his house is. His father knows closer than his house is. Then we talked about when you have a city within the Tchum in terms of do you count the city only as Dalit Amis or do you have to count it as far as much space as it takes up? That's how much you'll take into account from the Arab, from the Tchum. So, so if it, if the city lies entirely within your Tchum, well then it shrinks down to four Amis and you can keep on walking after the city however much more Amis you have, assuming that the city is only four Amis. Um, now, but if the city does not lie entirely within the Trum, well then you can only walk as far as the Trum will take you. Um, yeah, that is that. I hope that you enjoyed the Samach. Have a great day. Peace out.